सो वेलकम 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 एवरी वन टू यट अनदर रिविजन सेशन फॉर माई लवली साउथ इंडिया स्टूडेंट इन हंड्रेड परसेंट इंग्लिश एंड इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज अ लवी डवी इन डेस टेन दैट इज इवेंट्स आफ्टर द रिपोर्टिंग पीरियड सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द रिविजन इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दिस ऑन यूट्यूब एंड इफ यू आर नॉट सब्सक्राइब्ड और इफ यू हैव नॉट शेयर दिस वीडियो फ्रेंड्स वेरी बैड आर वेरी बैड है ना ऑल्सो इफ यू लाइक इट डू हिट द लाइक बटन द बोर्ड नोट्स विच आई यूज इन दिस इन डेस आई विल अपलोड ऑन माई टेलीग्राम यू कैन ज्वाइन थ्रू द डिस्क्रिप्शन लिंक इज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स ओके एंड इन दिस रिविजन आई विल रिवाइज द कंसेप्ट एंड आई विल ऑल्सो टेक अप सम गुड ट्रिकी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन रिविजन इन दिस ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट द रिविजन इन थ्री टू वन एंड गो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन डेस नंबर इज इन डेस टेन नेम इवेंट्स आफ्टर द रिपोर्टिंग पीरियड अच्छा इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू जिस्ट ऑफ इट वॉट इज दिस इवेंट्स आफ्टर द रिपोर्टिंग पीरियड सो यू कैन सी लेट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज माई फाइनेंशियल ईयर एंड ओके सो द इवेंट्स विच हॉप ऑकर बिटवीन द ईयर एंड एंड द डेट वेन दिस फाइनेंशियल आर अप्रूव्ड बाई बी ओ डी सो द इवेंट्स विच ऑकर ईयर आर इवेंट्स आफ्टर द रिपोर्टिंग पीरियड Okay, and these can be two types of events: adjusting or non-adjusting. So, if you look at the definition, it says these are favorable and unfavorable events that occur between end of reporting period and the date when FSR are approved. Acha. Here, one more point is given. What if? Let's see my example. What if I am a listed company? Okay, so this financial year ends on thirty-first March, and this financials are approved on fourteenth August. But between these date, one quarterly statement was submitted to. by the listed company does it impact my events after reporting period the answer is no it does not impact there is no relevance of this issuance okay do remember that part anyways then there are two types of events one is adjusting event and one is non adjusting event what is the meaning of adjusting event it basically means that something which already existed on the balance sheet date and after year end you got some additional evidence sir what is the example example you can take for example i made a sale to my debtors now someone did a case on my debtor before year end and after year end my debtor lost the case before fs were approved so this debtor losing the case is a additional evidence of the condition which existed on the balance sheet date okay so it is a adjusting event do remember that part so if it is a adjusting event what will i do i will adjust in my financial statements so i will take this treatment on the year end only so if my debtor has become bankrupt i will increase the provision for for debtors no okay then what is the meaning of non adjusting event any event whose condition was not existing on year end it directly arose after the year end so it is a non adjusting event what to do with this don't do anything name itself says non adjusting don't do anything ha if it is material then disclose in the financial statements sir give us example example some fire occurred after the year end so this is the non adjusting event as we had no clue on the year end for this done sir understood then there are some special cases in all in module there are three special cases i have discussed four of them okay you will come to know how first dividend declared after the reporting period if any company declares any dividend after year end but before approval of fs it is a non adjusting event because no liability for the dividend existed on year end okay what will you do with this dividend non adjusting event just disclose in the notes to account okay then going concern is the second special case if any non adjusting event occurs but it it affects your going concern assumption let's say fire occurred but because of this fire now your going concern assumption is no more valid you will treat this fire like a non not you will treat this fire like a adjusting event ideally it was a non adjusting event but if it affects your going concern treat it like a adjusting event and if i am treating like a adjusting event what will i do i will prepare my financial statements on liquidation or realization basis that is i will change my basis of preparation acha what if because of this fire my going concern assumption is not affected it is still valid then it was a non adjusting event disclose only if material okay sir then the third case interesting case what is that suppose you breach a long term loan arrangement okay so let's say you took a loan on the first day before year end you do a breach and from the date of breach till year end there are no talks of grace period or no talks of removing the condition of breach after year end suddenly the condition of breach got removed or you got a grace period of more than 12 months so how to treat this event you will treat this like a adjusting event that means because of this event your loan will again become non current because when the breach happened it became current now after year end but before approval of fs if we remove the condition treat it like a adjusting event and because of this on year end the loan will again become non current i discussed the logic of this in the class huh? i am not going to the logics because it is a revision video do remember that anyways chalo so 
अच्छा वन क्वेश्चन विल ऑल्सो अराइज सो दिस इज एफ आर विदे एक्सक्लूसिव वट इज एक्सक्लूसिव मीन दिस इज नॉट देर इन एनी वेयर वी हैव बिल्ड दिस बेस्ड ऑन आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो वट इज दिस सो द ब्रीच पॉइंट वॉज ऑल्सो देर इन इंडियस वन ना सो वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द पॉइंट वी डिस्कस इन इंडियस वन एंड द पॉइंट वी डिस्कस इन इंडियस टेन सो इट बेसिकली मीन्स दैट इन इंडियस वन वेन वी डिड द ब्रीच बिफोर यर एंड एंड वेन वी डू द ग्रेस पीरियड बिफोर यर एंड ओनली बट इन इंडियस टेन वी डिड द ब्रीच बिफोर यर एंड but we took the extension or we removed the condition after year end but before approval of fs that is the basic difference in the point of breach of indes 1 and indes 10 anyways acha there is one more special case related to inventories okay so this is nothing but a summary of all adjustments of inventories if you know this summary all types of questions get covered in this summary relating to inventories there will be no more confusion so what happens is in question they say the nrv falls after the reporting period of inventory okay if the nrv falls at a reporting period and there was a condition existing on year end of this fall then adjusting event acha what if nrv falls after year end but there was no condition existing so why did it fall it fell because of the price change or market fluctuation then also as a special case you will treat this fall like a adjusting event i know there was no condition existing on year end still treat it like a adjusting event as a exceptional case acha what if the nrv of inventory falls because of a fire or water leakage and such fire water leakage happened after the reporting period if any event happened after the reporting period then such fall in nrv will be also a non adjusting event in this case it is a non adjusting event so if value of nrv falls because of normal cases adjusting event if value of nrv falls at a year end because of fire or water leakage at a year end then non adjusting event do remember this examples are also given in my notes again i'm saying this board notes i will upload on my telegram if you feel the examples are uh, good for you for understanding you can refer them anyways acha then also uh, after this i discussed a few special cases as well few special examples also i discussed in case you remember first let's say for example in uh, 11 12 fraud happened management found about this fraud after the year end adjusting or non adjusting treated like a adjusting event don't say our management did not know about this fraud on year end are that is management's inefficiency can i say the fraud existed on year end so it is adjusting event similarly for example if you are doing a construction and after year end but before approval of fs you came to know that construction cost will increase because of a rocky surface okay which the company identified after year end but can i say if a rocky surface exist in the land it was existing from day one so if the cost of construction goes up after year end because of any structural fault which was existing from day one i have also mentioned that due to a rocky surface which the company identified later on of course it existed from the start of the contract we came to know later on so in this case also treated like a adjusting event do remember that okay acha also one more thing if any event occurs after the financial statements are approved okay in that case don't call it a non adjusting event if any event occurs after the fs are approved it is out of the scope of indes 10 why in indes 10 only those events come which happen between year end and date of when fs are approved other all events are non other all events are out of scope don't call it non adjusting event okay okay sir now this was the conceptual part of it also one more concept is there that is appendix a it has nothing to do with adjusting non adjusting it is a special guidance which is given for dividend so when you give dividend in non cash form let's say for example you give dividend in the form of a pp you gave one of your owner a pp for free so in that case it will be treated like a dividend in non cash form and the fair value of that pp will be the amount of dividend considered okay got it sir now let's take up some good questions which i feel are good for you uh one question is illustration number 15 we already discussed this you know rocky surface wala example which i gave you rocky surface we came to know later on but of course it existed from before only so treat it like a adjusting event okay then <coughs> there is illustration number 16 also what is here so basically there was a case which was ongoing in 11 12 and the, we won the case later on so adjusting event because the case was existing from 11 12 okay acha in some questions the reference of 37 is also given so if you have read india 37 you will understand the reference just do give it a read acha illustration number 17 what is there in this i am just giving you overview revision huh? so for example we are entitled to a duty drawback in a certain year for that we have to file a application within 15 days we filed the application late but we received the duty drawback okay so in that case 
this event is a adjusting or non adjusting event this is a adjusting event why because the condition of this already existed when i was entitled for the drawback right but again give the referencing of 37 as well acha um then 21 again is a good question what is happening here is in 11 12 you did certain transactions for which excise duty was to be paid but you paid less duty and because you paid less duty here you got a notice in the next year okay so now this notice because of the notice you have to pay a penalty of some amount adjusting or non adjusting so it will be a adjusting event why so the condition of notice did not exist on your end it existed when you paid the less duty on this financial year the condition already existed by default of receiving the notice so it is again a adjusting event do remember that part okay then we come to the mtp rtp questions first question has two parts where we are giving some discount on sale so discount can be of two types it can be trade discount or it can be any other discount cash discount or something if you are giving trade discount now you will record the sales at net of discount but if you are giving any other discount you will record the revenue separately you will record the discount separately in this case it was given not in the normal course of business is it was not a trade discount so we are treating it separately do remember acha second we entered into a sale deed on 15th march but the registration was done on 20th uh, april adjusting or non adjusting can i say sale deed was entered on 15th march registration is a additional evidence of condition already existing so adjusting event do remember that part acha question number 2 so what happens is the value of inventory is falling due to market fluctuation so if the value of inventory falls after year end due to market fluctuation adjusting event so cost 10 nrv 7.5 write down of 2.5 in the next year the nrv increased so but whenever the nrv increases in subsequent years of the same inventory whatever write down you did you can reverse it so we will reverse the write down of 2.5 which we did in the previous year that's it only this much is there in this question then question number 3 a very classic question it has four questions we have to tell them whether adjusting or not so first case there was a arbitration which was ongoing in the current year we won it stand uh, the company says because it is favorable because he won it they have not taken the effect as adjusting are baba event after the reporting period includes both favorable as well as unfavorable events and because the condition existed it is adjusting event second question second part is that inventory is only the value of inventory fell after year end but because of price change adjusting event third debtor became insolvent and the proceedings were going on before year end only adjusting event fourth we announced a restructuring after year end so this starts only after year end nothing was existing on year end so non adjusting event okay i gave you some hint on presentation also first define in dash 10 events at a reporting period then define adjusting non adjusting then for all the four cases answer in one sentence simple hello the most classic question of all that is question number 4 before revising this i would like to highlight this please write and practice at least two to three times okay now what is there we had a warehouse available for use from 2016 okay now there was a structural fault what is the meaning of structural fault just like rocky surface it existed from before only we came to know afterwards acha to when did we came to know if in case you want to see i prepared a timeline also for this so we came to know in the december is the year end okay we came to know in jan feb 2020 about the structural fault and because of this fault they are saying it is an indication of impairment so you have to conduct the impairment test but because it is a fault which is an adjusting event you will not conduct the impairment test in jan feb 2020 instead because adjusting event you will conduct the impairment test in immediately preceding financial year that is 31st december 19 so to conduct impairment test we need two amounts carrying amount recoverable amount what is the carrying amount we already have it. Oh, sorry what is the recoverable amount we already have it carrying amount you have to find it day one cost to have life normally is 30 years so keep on depreciating 1 2 3 we depreciate till 2018 now for 2019 a revised life is given so there the revised life is given as 20 years okay but ideally the revised life should have been applied from 31st december 19 but they have applied from 1st december 9 1st jan 19 okay and this 20 years is given in terms of 2016 i want the revised life in terms of 2019 so if as per 2016 the life is 20 years if i want the life from 2019 how much it will be 20 minus 1 2 3 so you will get 17 years okay so what they are doing is you have the cost of 2016 depreciate as per the normal normal life for 3 years 16 17 18 then for 2019 because we are assuming that the life has reassessed 
on 1st Jan 19, you will take the reassessed life and find the revised depreciation. Okay. I also discussed this in detail. Of course, I am just doing a revision of this. Okay. Do remember that part. Okay. So, you will get the revised depreciation as per the revised life. Again, I am repeating the revised life. If you read the question, it is given as 20 years. But 20 years is given from which date? From the date it was ready for use. Okay. So, 20 years is given from 2016. We have to find the revised life from 2019. So, if 20 years is from 2016, revised life, in terms of 2019, it will be 17 years. You can calculate, you will get the same answer. Okay. So, you got the revised depreciation of 2019. Then we get the carrying amount on 31st December 19 recoverable. We have passed the entry for impairment loss. Also, we will pass an entry for depreciation. In this question, they assume that they have passed the depreciation of 2019 incorrectly at 33 triple 3. But the right amount should have been 5941. So, they pass the incremental depreciation. Okay. So, this is the first part of the question. Out of this whole calculation, you might see it that it is really tricky. Only one part is important here. Calculation of depreciation for this year. If you can crack this rest remaining full question is manageable. Okay. Achha, there is a second part of this question also. That the damage to inventory has happened because of rainwater leakage. Water leakage is causing the damage. And water leakage happened after year end. Remember my chart. If damage to inventory is because of fire or water leakage. Non-adjusting event. Yes, sir. We remember. So, damage is happening because of a water leakage. So, non-adjusting event, sir. So, I have given this. See. Water leakage happened after year end. Okay. Which damaged my inventory. Non-adjusting event. Disclosive material. Achha. Then, third part is also asked in this question. What if the damage to warehouse, that is PP, was due to an event caused by caused after 31 December 19. That is, will your answer be different if there was no structural fault? It is saying that what if the damage to warehouse was not because of a structural fault? If structural fault was not there, then it would have been a non-adjusting event now. Because the whole point of treating as adjusting was because there was structural fault, right? So if damage to warehouse was not due to structural fault, it would have been a non-adjusting event, sir. Uh, then there is one more question, question number five, which is a basic, very simple question. It is saying that inventory is damaging. Uh, sorry, fire has damaged my inventory. So non-adjusting event, but the accountant is treated like an adjusting event. So just give them the correct treatment as well. So this completes our revision of India's 10. A very quick revision, a very good revision. I hope this was helpful for you. Okay, so thank you so much. If you like, do hit the like button and also do comment whether you like this session or not so that I can upload more such sessions. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Everyone take care. See you all. Bye-bye. So, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to this amazing session where we are going to revise our lovey-dovey, cute-cute, little-little, India S8, right? In this revision uh, session, we are going to revise all the concepts along with all the questions as well, right? All the important questions you can say. So, if you are watching this on YouTube and if you are watching the revision lecture without subscribing or sharing with your friends, it won't be helpful. So, first subscribe and then see the lecture. Yeah, chalo. So, let's, uh, without wasting time, let's start the revision in... 3, 2, 1 and go. Achha, before we start, the board notes which I used in this index, I will upload on my Telegram channel. Link is in the description. You can join it and uh, you can uh, download that board notes as well. Chalo. Now let's start. The revision in 3, 2, 1 and go. So first of all, number, index 8, name, accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors. So basically, whole index is divided into three parts if you can see. The first part is accounting policy, second part is accounting estimate, third part is error. Now, let's start discussing about accounting policies. Now, what is the meaning of accounting policy? In case you remember, I linked the accounting policy with relationship. Okay, you might be able to recall that example as well. Chalo. So first, we define what is accounting policy. What is it? So whatever principles, basis, conventions, rules, practices you use, where do we use? In preparing and presenting financial statements are known as accounting policies. Sir, give some example to understand this. Basically, if you are following cash, accrual or hybrid uh, model of accounting, that is accounting policy. Choosing between cost or revaluation model is an accounting policy. Choosing between FIFO or weighted average or specific identification method is also an accounting policy. Right? So first, they have defined what is accounting policy. Next point. For each transaction, how do we select and apply the accounting policy? So, first we will take guidance of index. If specific index is available for that policy, follow the index. If index is not available, then you will use a judgment. For example, what is the transaction which where there is no index available? Do you remember we discussed about cryptocurrency? There is no index as of now on this, right? So, for this particular transaction, management will use judgment, which policy to follow. While using judgment, do remember that you should use 
such method which should result in more relevant liable information and while making judgment if there is if there is any index use that index if index is not available use the framework if that is also not available use the pronouncements okay of iasb or other standard setting bodies if none of these is available then you can uh, then you can check what everyone is in the industry is following that you can follow as well acha whatever you follow whatever you uh, choose you should apply it consistently let's say for example you choose any model so for our similar transition you should use same model but if any index permits category wise applying the model then that is also allowed for example do you remember in india city it was said that for same class we will use same model for same class we will use same model right that means if there are different nature of different class of assets in different class different model is allowed similarly index it also says that when you are applying policy you can check whether the respective index permits category wise applying or not similarly in inventory also it was there same nature of inventory same method but the if the inventory nature is different you can use different methods for different nature of inventory anyways then change in accounting policies can we ever change our accounting policy the answer is yes in two cases which are those two cases first if it is required by index or second if it results in more relevant liable information that is you are changing it voluntarily acha now if you see the flow of accounting policies it is defining then selecting then whatever you select apply consistently then for discussing whether we can change it just like relationship first defining what is relationship then selecting a good girlfriend boyfriend for yourself then whatever you are choosing for yourself you will at least think that we will keep a long term relation we will try to marry that respective person but if something goes wrong of course we can change it right change can happen because of two things either your parents don't approve the girlfriend boyfriend or you are changing it voluntarily because you find a better prospect same is the case with policy in our case parents means india so if it is required by india change the policy or if you feel that you have a better prospect if you feel that any other method can result in more relevant liable information use that method remember na we use the example yes sir acha in following two cases these are not changes in accounting policies there are two examples given first application of accounting policy for transactions that differ in substance from those previously occurring in case you remember i discussed let's say for example you were under india 16 you were following revaluation model now you shifted to india 40 in india 40 we have to follow cost model now once you reclassify your asset from one index to another index and because of it the model is changing it is not change in policy it is first time adoption of policy similarly let's say if you bought index 40 ip for the first time in your life and if you apply any accounting policy to this this is not changing policy this is first time adoption of policy okay then fifth fourth fifth point is applying changes in policy how do you apply any change so if you must see you are changing the policy because of whom if you are changing the policy because of index and that index might have given you specific transition provisions follow the transition provision given by index acha if you are changing the policy because of index but index does not include any specific transitional provisions in that case you will apply the policy retrospectively acha if you are changing voluntarily that is change was not required by index but if you feel that it will result in more relevant liable information that is why you are changing it so you will also apply the change retrospectively acha whenever we say we have to apply the change retrospectively we have to prepare opening balance sheet that is balance sheet on the day one of previous year two more important things if you are adopting any index before it is applicable early application of index this won't be treated as a voluntary change do remember second if for example for any transaction you are following a pronouncement and any amendment comes in the pronouncement because of which your policy also changes for cryptocurrency let's say you were following cost because of the pronouncement now the pronouncement changes and it says you have to follow fair value now because of any pronouncement amendment you are changing the policy this will be treated as voluntary change and not the change required by index do remember acha now they talk about retrospective application whenever you apply anything retrospectively you will also have to prepare a third balance sheet as you already discussed opening balance sheet on the day one of previous year so what is the purpose of preparing a third balance sheet in case you remember i also told you see whenever let's say for example you are changing the policy you are changing the policy from fifo to weighted average so you will apply the change from current year then you will apply the change in current year comparatives right so in the previous year column when you are showing the comparatives instead of fifo value they invented weighted average and whatever effect is there before previous year because retrospectively means you have to apply as if you are following this new policy from day one so current year effect we gave in current year previous year effect we gave in previous year what about the effect of before previous years that will give in opening balance sheet do remember that part okay yes acha also one more thing is given sometimes retrospective application is impracticable that means it is not possible to apply from first day so whenever it is practicable apply from that particular day 
disclosure whenever you change a policy disclose the nature reason effect if the retrospective application was impracticable disclose the reason for it and if any new index is issued but not yet effective that means any new index is going to come in future the draft is ready but it has not yet become effective in that case you should disclose this fact and the possible impact of that new index just like if you are getting married if you are going to get married in future anytime soon tell the impact to your friends that i'm gone now <laughs> and what is the possible impact on our life similarly if a new index is going to come not yet effective but draft is ready so disclose the fact along with the possible impact <coughs> this was your accounting policy next accounting estimate do you remember i also made you write some extra theory part in the accounting estimate so what are accounting estimates basically whenever there is any uncertainty relating to measurement of any asset liability income expense that is accounting estimate right now company develops estimate to achieve the objective set by policy that means estimate is the step two of policy sir give us example let's say you have a pp so in pp you can apply cost model you can apply revaluation model so applying any of the model is a policy but if you are following reval model you will have to find the fair value finding the fair value is the accounting estimate so it says company develops estimate to achieve objective set out by the accounting policy and also you, you will have to use judgment and assumptions while developing accounting estimates examples are given loss allowance of expected credit loss basically impairment loss as per 109 is a estimate nrv of inventory estimate fair value of any asset liability is a estimate depreciation of pp is a estimate provision of warranty is also estimate clear with this yes sir then if can you change any accounting estimate yes you can change in three cases either you receive any new information because of which you feel that you will have to change your estimate or you get more experience you feel that the past estimate is not proper you have to increase or decrease the estimate based on your new experience or there is any new development due to which you feel the estimate can change due to these three reasons you can change your estimate acha whenever you change any estimate so estimate is always applied prospectively prospectively means you will not change your comparatives the day you decide to change the estimate from that particular year apply the change do not touch the previous year figures right so you will apply the change from the date of change in estimate it may affect only the current and future periods but not the past comparatives okay three clarification points are given here first can change in estimate be related to prior periods the answer is no change in estimate is applied for prospectively so never change the comparatives you cannot change the prior period items change in the basis of measurement whether it is a policy or estimate example choosing between cost and revalue revaluation model is a policy or estimate we'll already discuss it is a policy also for if for any particular transaction is it is it is getting difficult to distinguish between a change in policy or a change in estimate always treat it like a change in estimate simple next point is disclosure whenever you change a estimate disclose the nature amount effect okay now next part errors do you remember when you will call anything as a error if you committed any error in previous or before previous year but you came to know in the current year that is a error right if you did a error in the current year but you found it in the current year that is not a error so error is omission or misstatement omission means you forgot it or misstatement means you recorded it incorrectly in entities financial statements for one or more prior periods so it should lead to one or more prior periods why did it arise it arise from failure to use or misuse the reliable information so you forgot to use it or you misuse the reliable information which information which was available at that time and could reasonably be expected to have been obtained so if that information if you have made reasonable effort you could have obtained that information so if you could have obtained that information but you did not and you forgot to use it that is a omission or error you can say right acha if this information was was unable you could have you could have put in reasonable effort still you would have not got this information and in case because of that information you did not record anything that is not a error so basically error will only be called as a error when you forgot to use the information which was available if that information could not have been made available then it is not a error okay then types of errors are there five types of errors are there first is mathematical mistake self explanatory amount you have got it wrong second is mistakes in applying policy that means example is given asset liability should not be offset unless permitted by ndas but still you offset any asset liability misinterpretation of facts you treated any adjusting like a non adjusting event or vice versa omission forgot to record any particular transaction fraud happened which you came to know later on okay now accountant treatment of errors please listen to me carefully now if error relates to previous year okay if error relates to previous year how will you rectify the error you will apply it retrospectively it means you will change the comparatives of previous year now because you are only changing the comparative of previous year opening balance sheet is not required because no amount will change of opening balance sheet 
but if the error relates to before previous year in that case you will apply retrospectively and in comparatives prepare one extra balance sheet that is opening balance sheet okay and you will change the amount in opening balance sheet okay then notice given whenever you get retrospective effect prepare opening balance sheet if retrospective reshipment is impracticable give the reason for the same and also one more thing whenever you restate whenever you apply anything retrospectively for previous year use the words restated okay do remember disclosure is required nature amount and if the retrospective reshipment is impracticable give the reasons for the same now important point here there is something known as classification error what is the meaning of classification error it means you incorrectly classified any particular item so if the for example if the classification error is of a pnl item and it relates to previous year example you classified a finance expense under other expenses so the classification went wrong but there is no mistake in the amount only classification mistake is there and if the classification error is of a pnl item you will rectify the error in previous year compared to the pnl no need to prepare the opening balance sheet okay but here comes the exceptional case okay if classification error relates to any balance sheet item you showed any current asset item like a non current item okay in previous year so we will rectify the comparative of previous year but you might say that because it relates to previous year we need not give opening balance sheet you are wrong it is the only case where even if the error relates to previous year you will have to give the opening balance sheet which is that clear classification error of a balance sheet item of previous year so in this case you will have to give the opening balance sheet okay do remember this part so this was the conceptual discussion of index 8 of course there are many questions which are very straight forward so my focus will be more on those questions which are crucial from your exam point of view okay illustration number 9 you should read it see what it says i will give you an overview of it so there is a company who was selling and fitting the carpet okay selling and fitting the carpet giving the service of selling as well as fitting it and they were they were booking the revenue after fitting the carpet now the company changed the business model they shifted only to selling fitting they would provide a third party support so now they are booking the revenue directly after selling directly after selling not fitting now they are booking the revenue directly after selling so is this a change in policy the answer is no not a change in policy sir why sir you are changing the policy when revenue booking now this is not changing policy why because you are changing the method due to a change in business model your business model previously was sell plus fit now it is only selling that is why you have changed the revenue booking so this is more like a first time adoption of policy not a change in policy do remember that part okay then uh, we can proceed further direct questions are there please give it a read okay i am more focus i am focusing more on those questions which are critical illustration number 17 is there so basically in this question we are changing the policy from fifo to weighted average and because you are changing the retrospective impact have been given as if if you if you were following the new method from previous 3 years there would have been such increase in the closing stock okay and as per the old method 2 uh, years profit and loss is given re balance return on is balance as on opening day of previous year is given you are required to present the change in policy in profit and loss and produce an extract of soc e statement of changes in equity balance sheet is not asked do remember that we know that whenever apply accounting policy retrospectively we need to give opening balance sheet but balance sheet is not asked okay there is no concept of opening profit and loss huh? in profit and loss you give only two columns current year previous year okay do remember that part so how do we solve this so in case you remember i made you uh, prepare some draft trading accounts right so whatever is the effect you will come to know like in two years before your closing stock would have increased by 10 million given in the question due to this my gp would have increased by 10 million so if this closing stock would have increased the next year's opening stock would also have increased this impact is given net gp impact increase in 5 million if this closing stock would have increased next year's opening would have also increased closing is given net gp impact 5 million simple right so these are the three trading accounts i have prepared now due to the change in method which of the items which of the amounts in this full pnl will change only cogs amount will change right so if you see revenue will remain the same what about cogs do remember the formula for cogs it is opening plus purchase minus closing what is the meaning of this if your closing stock is increasing closing stock is less from cogs increasing closing stock will reduce your cogs apply some common sense right so don't look at uh, before previous year in profit loss there are only two columns current year and previous year so for current year your cogs will be 159 how come opening stock increase by 10 million opening stock has a positive impact on cogs so add 10 million closing stock increase has a negative impact on cogs because closing stock is direct, because closing stock is directed in cogs so less it you will get the uh, cogs for 2 years you will find the profit then 
when you are preparing SOC e extract, you are given the retained earnings on opening day of previous year, 423. Can I say before previous year also there was an impact of increase in GP by 10 million? Don't forget to give that impact. This impact 10 million did not come in profit and loss, but has to come in retained earnings directly. So first we will give that impact and then once you get the retained profit, add previous year's profit and then add current year profits as well. You will get the retained earnings balance. Okay, so simple question, good question. Then there is one illustration number 18. What does it say? So basically it says that there was an error. We we made some sale, but we forgot to remove it out from the inventory in previous year. So that can I say your previous year closing stock is inflated. So your closing stock will get reduced. If your closing stock reduces, just imagine the trading account. Closing stock comes on the income side. If that income side is getting reduced, GP will also reduce. If previous year closing is inflated, can I say current year opening will also be inflated? So opening stock will also reduce. Opening stock comes on the expense side. If expense is reducing, GP will increase. This is the understanding part of it. Now, how do the how, how does it impact? So basically the information was given for previous year and current year. Of course, see, do remember that watching the question in revision lecture is not a replacement of writing practice. You have to write and practice. I'm just discussing the key aspects of it. Here also the only important change is COGS. Have a look. In previous year, my COGS given is 53,500. Now imagine the impact of previous year. In COGS, closing stock is deducted. Right? And I have to reduce my closing stock. That means you have to reduce a negative item. Right? You have to reduce a negative item. So can I say minus and minus becomes plus? So that is why you plus it. One way of remembering it. Second way of remembering it is your GP should also reduce by 6,500. When will your GP reduce? When your expense increases? So COG should increase. In the current year, vice versa. Find it out on your own. So you will get uh, profit after tax. Also number of shares were given for EPS. So we, deduct, we uh, divided profit divided by number of shares. You will get the EPS as well. SOC extract very easy to prepare. Equity share capital was given. It does not change over the period. Retained earnings. Opening balance is given. Add previous year, add current year. You will get the balance. Achha, one more thing was given extra working in the solution. That is comparing the old figures and the reshared figures. That means the old figures given in the balance sheet. For example, in the question, let's say for example, COGS given is 53,500. But as after rectifying the error, what is my COGS? It is 60,000. Can I say in reshared, in new... In new wala profit and loss, your COGS is increasing by 6,500, right? So this impact is shown in the uh, solution as well. That increase in COGS 6,500. Likewise, you compare previous year old figures and previous and new figures. You have to show the impact of increase decrease. If you want to simplify it, ignore the positive negative sign. Just uh, tell me the increase decrease of each and every item. Do practice it as well. Okay, then um, do read illustration number 19. It is a very simple question. Okay. And then question number two as well. Just give it a read. Again, a very simple question. Just give it a read. Okay. So these are few questions which I would like to highlight uh, for you. And this completes our revision of India's 8. Accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors. So I hope you like the revision. In case you like it, do uh, like the video and also share it with your friends. And also do leave a comment so that it will motivate me and uh, let and let me know your feedback on the same. That will help me. That will motivate me to upload more such videos. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much everyone. Bye-bye everyone. Take care. See you all. Bye-bye. So welcome, welcome, welcome my friends to another revision session which is going to be in 100% English for my lovey Davi South India students. Okay, so in this revision video again we are going to revise all the concepts and questions in English. Concepts we will cover 100% questions which are important from exam point of view. Which question even have one important adjustment that I will try to cover in this revision video as well. So without wasting any time, let's start. But before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel and watching the revision video, oh my God, such a big uh, sin you have made. So first <laughs> subscribe and then watch the revision video. Also, the board notes which I use in my revision video, you can find it on my Telegram channel. So the link is in the description box. Go and join very quickly. Okay, chalo. let's start the revision in three. 2, 1 and go. So, the number is index 37, name, provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets. Okay. So, now before starting any of these pointers, we will first try to understand the definition of liability. So, liability has three pointers. 
where there is a present obligation past event and where there will be outflow of resources this is known as a liability now what is the meaning of obligation obligation simply means that there is no realistic alternative other than settling it that means you have to pay it no matter what Achha. but obligation can be of two types in case to remember it can be legal obligation it can be constructive obligation so what is the meaning of legal obligation legal obligation is anything which arises out of a contract or a law right so if you have a contract where you purchased anything on credit so it is a legal obligation creditors if you took a loan from bank legal obligation okay what is the meaning of constructive obligation in case you remember my secretary example i gave bonus to secretary every year without promising her but if i gave it for a specific number of years can i say in further all further years also she will expect the same constructive obligation so it is nothing but a past practice policy or specific statement integrated to others that has created a valid expectation for the other party okay just like you contaminated a river which you are not required to clean legally but you have promised the villagers that you will clean the river constructive obligation okay so this is obligation now then the next point is past event what is the meaning of past event for any liability to be booked there should be past event for example in case of creditors purchasing the goods on credit is the past event in case of loan liability taking the loan is a past event okay which will result in outflow of resources outflow of resources means either you have to give cash or in kind or something you have to give you have to make the payment no matter what Achha, don't think from the point of view of Sri 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 Vijay Malaya don't say that I will sir run away with the money that you are not discussing we are saying realistically you will have to make the payment anyways now the next point is provision what is a provision it is nothing but the liability with uncertain timing or amount either the timing of payment is uncertain or the amount is uncertain that is a provision okay now when do you recognize a provision so recognition character of provision is linked with the definition of liability remember the three points present obligation past event outflow of resources just add that it needs to be reliabilitated reliably estimated when estimation is involved it becomes a provision do remember that part okay yes then for this also for any uh, provision to be booked there should be a past event apart from this if any expense is avoidable you should not book its provision for example in if government says you need to inspect every 5th year 10th year 15th year so this this inspection will arise this can be avoided why by selling the aircraft okay so you need not book any provision for the same also if any new law is yet, is yet to come you will book you will that will that new law will create an obligation for you only when that is virtually certain for example modi said that i will impose a says of one says of one percent but this is not a finalized they are in talks to impose the same so it is not at virtually certain so do not consider the same okay next is measurement of provision so when you record any provision you need to measure it there are five pointers to it first is best estimate what is the meaning of best estimate best estimate means because we have to estimate the provision how do we estimate it so if there are large population of items you will consider the probability for example in case of warranties you sell so many products now so you will have to consider the probability of each item right so let's say for example i sold 1000 units i have given the probability of warranty claims and also the cost of claim so i will make i will use this probability and compute the value of provision this is used when there are large population of items but when there is a single item let's say i contaminated the river either i will give the cleaning process to contractor number one or contractor number two here there are only two outcomes possible so here item is single outcome possible only two you will consider the most likely outcome anyways present value second second point in measurement is present value whether you will consider the provision at present value the answer is yes only if time value is material example in case of decommissioning we used to consider present value only next risk and uncertainties let's what is the meaning of this let's say for example you are creating a provision of two percent on your sales let's say i'm iphone company now with iphone 15 there were some issues like heating issues color fading screen uh, breakage or everything due to which can i say customer claims will increase so should i consider this risk and uncertainty and increase my amount of warranty provision the answer is of course yes you should okay next point is future events what is the meaning of future events let's say for example i was watching a tv i was watching a news channel where it was uh, shown that japan is thinking of making a technology which will reduce the uh, decommissioning amount but there is no evidence of this future event they are only talks so you, will you consider this future event and reduce the amount of provision the answer is no if no evidence is available do not consider it if the evidence was available then you might consider it anyways next is expected disposal of asset what is the meaning of this let's say for instance you are closing some facilities so when you close the facility whatever is the closure cost you will book a provision for the same but when you close a facility you will also sell your properties now on which you can get some gain 
this gain on sale of property is to be ignored. It will be booked only when it is realized. So the provision amount will be 10 lakhs gross. Okay. Next is provision required at the end of 10 lakhs. It is fine. Okay. Then use of provision. Provision you will create by passing the entry expense to provision. If this expense did not arise, you will reverse it. You cannot use this provision against any other expense. Do remember that. Next is changes in provision. You will review the provision at every year and why? Because it was an estimate. If there is any change in estimate, how can the estimate change? For example, let's say we were estimating previously. After few months, we came to the exact amount. Can I say in that case, the provision will become liability? So it is said that only. First review at every year and then if the obligation is crystallized, an exact amount is known that will be classified as a liability. And also whenever provision was at a, a present value, you will do unwinding interest to provision. For future operating losses, what is the meaning of this? Let's say for example, Kishan has a business. If he runs it for the next three years, he will have to incur a loss. This is future operating loss. You will not create any provision today for future operating loss because there is no past event. It has not yet arised. Okay, good. Before moving further, before discussing contingent liability, contingent asset, I will discuss reimbursements now. See, if I want to show you the chart, how is the flow? First, I discussed the definition of liability and obligation. Then we discussed everything about provisions. Now, before discussing liability and contingent asset, I will discuss reimbursement owners and restructuring. Okay. So what is the meaning of reimbursement? Sometimes what happens is, let's say best example, your article ship. In article ship, whenever you travel to a client place, your principal says that we will reimburse your traveling expense, right? So the entry for reimbursement is expense to provision. Sorry, the entry for uh, booking the expense is expense to provision. If this expense is reimbursed and that reimburse is virtually certain, you will book a reimbursement asset to reimbursement income. Few points to be remembered. Reimbursement asset will come in balance sheet. Provision will come in balance sheet. Net off is not allowed. But expense of provision will come in profit and loss. Reimbursement income will come in profit and loss. Net off is allowed. Second thing, book the reimbursement only when it is sure to be received. It is virtually certain to be received. If not virtually certain, just disclose it. Don't book it. Third, the amount of reimbursement cannot exceed the amount of provision. If any excess is promised, that excess will be booked only when it is actually received. Do remember that part. Okay. <coughs> this was reimbursement. Next is onerous contract. In short, it is known as loss making contract where the unavoidable costs are going to exceed your benefits. So if you enter into a contract and after entering, you come to know that now you are, now this contract is going to be a loss. So you will book a provision for this loss. Okay. So let's say for example, uh, we enter into a construction contract where I thought the expense was only one CR, but it actually turned out to be 1.3 CR. My revenue is only 1.2 CR. So loss is 10 lakhs. So I will book, make a provision of either the loss or there can be a possibility where you can make the penalty and move out of the contract. So loss or penalty, whichever is lower, because if the loss is lower, I will make sure that I fulfill the same. Okay. There is an amendment also here, not very crucial, but just uh, remember that when you are calculating the cost, when you're calculating the expense, also consider the expense of depreciation and impairment losses. If it was, if any PPE was used, let's say in construction, we used bulldozers and everything. So the depreciation of bulldozer and impairment loss of disposal will also be considered here to remember. Achha, further. Next point is restructuring. What is the meaning of restructuring? It means that when you change the scope of a business or the manner in which business is conducted, for example, let's say from uh, today, I decide that instead of teaching, I will do singing. I am changing the scope of my business or let's say instead of offline teaching, I will shift to online teaching. I am changing the manner in which my existing business is conducted. This is known as restructuring. If you decide to restructure, should you book a provision? Yes, but only when an obligation arises. And when does the obligation arise? Only when you have prepared a detailed formal plan and you have created a valid expectation. And how is a valid expectation created? Either you have started to implement the plan or you have announced uh, this plan to those affected by it. Okay. If obligation arises, you will have to create a provision. Now, which amount will come in provision? So I have taken a good example for you in case you remember. Let's say, for example, I was into offline teaching. Now I will close my offline teaching and shift to online teaching. So there are two expenses involved. One is relating to the closure of this offline teaching where I will lay off the employees, where if I was taking uh, the offline class on rent, that rent is a non-cancellable contract. I, I will have to make the payment of rent and other relevant expense for closing the business. In restructuring provision, you will only consider these expenses which are relating to the closure of the business. Okay. But let's say you are shifting to online teaching. So when you start online teaching, you will have to invest in technology, hire new employees, train the new employees, marketing expense. These expense, you will not 
consider in the amount of provision why because these relate to future conduct of business so do remember in the provision of restructuring consider only those expense which relate to the existing closure of business if it relates to the future conduct of business it will not come in restructuring provision the same is mentioned here as well clear guys yes sir this is clear chalo now the two remaining points were uh, one was uh, contingent liability do remember contingent liability is never recorded it is only disclosed but there are three definitions for contingent liability what are those three definition let me discuss this very, very quickly so this definition is linked with the recognition criteria of provision remember the recognition of provision present obligation past event outflow and reliable estimate once any one condition not fulfilled it becomes a contingent liability how come if instead of present obligation it was a possible obligation it is a contingent liability if there is a present obligation past event but outflow is not probable contingent liability if it is a present obligation past event outflow is probable but amount cannot be estimated reliably contingent liability in case you remember i made you remember that also okay what is present and possible obligation present means more than 50 percent chance that we'll have to pay it possible means less than 50 percent chance that we'll have to pay it okay do remember also given a summary of all the three definitions for you okay so this was contingent liability if there is any contingent liability what will you do you will disclose it okay next if the possibility of payment is very remote no need to disclose third if for any liability you are jointly liable for example hema and supraja took a joint loan out of this joint loan 75 crores belong to hema and 25 belongs to supraja what is the main motive of taking a joint loan they become the guarantor for each other's share so for example for hema her share was 75 cr liability the other party's share becomes a contingent liability for hema because she becomes a guarantor for supraja same applies for supraja also right so now you can read any joint liability own share it will be liability other share it becomes a contingent liability last point the contingent liability also needs to be reviewed at each year end next point contingent asset it is nothing but a possible asset that arises out of past event whose occurrence will be confirmed in future only what to do with the contingent asset if the inflow of the asset is virtually certain so it says if the inflow is virtually certain for example i did a case on ajay i won the case penalty amount i will receive is 50 crores court has said to ajay that ajay has to pay 50 crores to me only the payment is yet to be received by me in this case we will say inflow is virtually certain when the inflow is virtually certain it is no more a contingent asset it has become an asset and when it becomes an asset recognize the same if the inflow is probable but not virtually certain that means chances are of 50 50 to 95 percent you will disclose the contingent asset but if the inflow is not probable less than 50 percent chance of receiving the inflow neither record nor disclose Achha, do remember in the first case we are not recording a contingent asset huh? because the inflow was virtually certain i am saying that my contingent asset has now become an asset so i am recording the asset here do remember that part okay this completes the uh, conceptual part of the chapter to be very honest uh, the questions in this chapter are very straightforward if you know the concept you will know the question so there are not many questions to be revised here but yes uh, maybe a two or three questions are there which i feel i need to revise i will take those up okay illustration number 15 not a ldr but a normal question it says that uh, we have received a notice from the income tax okay so and it is said that company is not confident of winning the case so that means company feels that there are more than 50 percent chance that it will lose the case present obligation so create a what you can say create a uh, provision for the same okay do remember that part uh, then next question is illustration number 18 a very good question based on restructuring so basically what we are doing is we are discontinuing a business okay obligation we announced the same on 15th feb so obligation has arised now when we discontinue a business we are terminating some employees this termination payments will form part of the provision 540 but also there is index 10 involved here adjusting event so basically 540 was the normal provision but when that fs are approved by that date we have a new information that actual payment was only 520 so we will take we will treat like adjusting event and consider 520 lakhs apart from this we are also making some relocation payments relocating means transferring employees from existing a business to new business this is relating to future conduct of business do not consider in provision amount also there is a lease operating lease in the old business we have which we have to cancel and make a payment 430 lakhs considered in the provision but the actual payment turned out to be 410 
adjusting event consider 410 so 520 plus 410 make a provision of 830 simple but of course give the relevant uh, sorry 930 but of course give the relevant theory as well anyways uh, then the next good question is i guess uh, the question number 1 of mtp rtp what is happening here see there is a company qa limited so it sold something to customer so customer made a uh, filed a case against qa because the product was faulty qa discovered that the product was faulty not from his end it was faulty from the supplier's end so qa in turn did a case on supplier so basically if we talk about qa on one hand he will have to make a penalty outflow to the customer k on the other hand he will receive a penalty inflow from the supplier so the penalty outflow here is a provision but the penalty inflow here the inflow of penalty is not virtually certain it was not promised by the supplier to recover the penalty inflow you are doing a case on the supplier here so this inflow is not virtually certain so you will book it like a contingent asset here so the payment of penalty is a provision the receipt of penalty it is because not virtually certain it is a contingent asset now there are many things asked in this question i will just give an overview of the same so first let's talk about the penalty payment which you have to pay so provision of 5 cr is estimated on 1st october it was revised to 5.1 year end then 5.25 on 15th may and on 1st june it turned out to be 5.3 so again you will feel like indes 10 is coming into picture but the fs were approved on 26th april so if you see closely year end is this fs approved on 26th april and few events happened on 15th may and 1st june these events are not adjusting neither they are non adjusting because they are happening after the date of approval of fs they are out of the scope so do not consider these events so basically your provision amount will be 5.2 ignore 5.25 ignore 5.3 because this 5.25 and 5.3 is after the uh, date of approval of fs okay then for the penalty received any which phase it is a contingent asset for us so nothing to be done first point they have asked whether company is required to make the provision of course the answer is yes second part amount of provision it will be 5.2 third part what to do with the penalty inflow contingent asset just disclose it it may be disclosed simple then the next good question is i guess question number 6 which relates to warranty so basically they are saying that we provided a 6 month warranty to the customer typically our gross margin is given as 40% but we make the provision of provision of 1% on gross margin as of now we are making the provision on 1% of gross margin but when the company checked based on past experience it is expected that the warranty claim will be 1% of equipment sold that means the company made a mistake of making the provision on the gross margin amount the provision should be made on the sales amount okay so we rectified the same how do we rectify so for the first we were given the amount of provision as per the gross margin but no other information is given okay no other amount of sales is given so we have to reverse calculate and find the total amount of sales first because provision is to be created on sales so what we will do we know that provision of 30000 is 1% of gross margin so with that you can find the gross margin cross multiply okay you got the gross margin gross margin was 40% on sales so you can find the sales through this then because you are giving only 6 month warranty for the first 6 month sale warranty has already lapsed till year end no provision on this sales for the next 6 months warranty is outstanding make the provision it comes to 37500 out of this you have already created 30000 in the books create additional 7500 simple okay there is also case 2 case to it says that what if the warranty period had been 2 years what if the warranty period had been 2 years then so in that case you will create the warranty provision on full year sales okay don't make the mistake of taking the sales into two we are we are not asked to compute two years warranty provision we are only asked to compute what will be the provision for the current year sales so because the warranty is of two years full sales which you made in current year is eligible for warranty so we will create the warranty on full sales simple uh, then this was question number 6 then there is illustration number 7 uh, nothing much in this seems to be a big question but a very simple question i will just give a overview of this so what happens here is company has entered into a owners contract now for owners contract we know now we have to consider the cost the revenue amount and the net loss is your amount of provision so for the cost they have given the some information that admin finance r&d because these are indirect overheads we have not consider the same in cost which the management is correct then for 
कंपिटिशन ऑफ अनअवॉइडेबल कॉस्ट देव ओनली कंसिडर्ड मटेरियल कॉस्ट लेबर कॉस्ट ओवर एड्स विच आर डिरेक्ट कॉस्ट इर ऑल्सो मैनेजमेंट इज करेक्ट देन दे गिव द अमाउंट ऑफ ओन रेस प्रोविजन अमाउंट सो दे आर वास्ट वेदर द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ माई मैनेजमेंट इज करेक्ट और नॉट इज इन लाइन विद इंडिया स्टडीज और नॉट वन ऑफ द रेयर क्वेश्चन वेर वट एवर दे हैव सेड इन द क्वेश्चन इट इज करेक्ट सो यू हैव टू जस्ट एफर एफॉर्म द सेम यू हैव जस्ट टू कन्फर्म द सेम दैट वट एवर दे हैव डन इज इट इज करेक्ट ओके सो नॉर्मली वी आर यूज टू सेंग दैट द अकाउंटेंट हैज डन सम इन करेक्ट ट्रीटमेंट बट यर एवरी थिंग वॉज करेक्ट सो डू रिमेंबर गुड क्वेश्चन यू कैन रीड इट ओके सो ऑन दिस नॉट वी हैव कंप्लीटेड our special division of india 37 as well i hope this proves to be helpful also if you have not taken the lectures yet and if you feel that you might need it or if you feel any of your friends might uh, might benefit from this uh, lecture so you can recommend them uh, the batch which is there in english it is available on bbwatchers.com on that note thank you so much bye bye everyone take care see you all bye bye